We all have photos saved to our phones or a photo album that's kept in our houses that contains precious memories of loved ones and special events in our lives. But some photos show less than the truth as they often have disturbing backstories or more sinister events connected to them, even though the photo looks relatively normal. Number five. If I were to ask you what this photo depicts, you would in all likelihood think that it's just an old timey photo of an older lady. And although she has a less than friendly expression on her face, it would be hard to imagine that she's anything but pleasant. That is until you hear her backstory. Before we keep going with the video, I wanted to show you guys a great new mobile game called June's Journey. If you're into true crime and mysteries as much as I am, this game will be perfect for you. June's Journey is a hidden object game, but with a pretty captivating story involving a murder mystery. It takes place back in the 1920s, and each new scene and level takes you through a different chapter of the story, setting up June Parker, the main character, to solve the mysterious murder of her sister. This game is completely free to download, and the basic idea of the game is hunting for clues and hidden objects that may help bring June one step closer to solving the case. You can customize and remodel your mansion as well as your garden island along the way. Now, I grew up playing seek and find games like this, so this game is right up my alley, and I feel like you guys will enjoy it as well. It's super relaxing to play and easy to pick up when you have a few free minutes here or there throughout the day. You can click the link below in the description to download the game on iOS and Android devices, but it's also available on PC through Facebook games. So if you're ready to dive headfirst into a captivating murder mystery and help June solve the mysterious case surrounding her sister, just click the link below to download June's Journey. This photo is of a woman called Louise Monnier de Marconi, who in 1901 lived in Paris, France. Although her husband had passed away by that stage, she was still considered to be a respected member of the community. But that all changed when an anonymous letter revealed her true nature and the events that had been going on behind the family's closed doors. In the letter, the sender claimed that someone was being held against her will at the de Marconi household. It was well known that Louise had a daughter named Blanche, but no one had seen her for over two decades after she fell in love with a lawyer. But it would turn out that Louise didn't approve of their relationship, as she felt that the lawyer wasn't good enough for her daughter. When Blanche refused to stop seeing him, her mother took drastic steps. To stop Blanche from seeing the man, Louise locked her in one of the rooms of their house and would not allow her to leave, but still, Blanche declared her love for the lawyer. This would go on for the next 25 years until the anonymous letter exposed the truth. When police arrived at the house to investigate, they found Blanche living in horrible conditions and she was immediately taken to the hospital. Louise would pass away before she could stand trial. And although her brother, Marcel, was convicted for his part in Blanche's ordeal, he was later acquitted. Blanche would eventually be transferred to a psychiatric hospital, where she stayed until she passed away in 1913. Number 4 We're used to seeing mannequins on a daily basis inside of shops or in their storefront windows, where they display the clothing that's for sale in that shop. Nonetheless, they can still be a little creepy sometimes, especially when they're found in unexpected places. This photo looks like any other storefront window, with a male and female mannequin donning evening attire, the latter lounging on an orange couch. But take a look at the sign that's hidden behind the couch, and we can see parts of the words nuclear materials. In truth, these mannequins weren't in any store window, but instead made up part of a makeshift town called Doomtown in Nevada. From 1952 to 1955, these towns were constructed and fitted with mannequins by the US government while they were conducting tests, codenamed Annie, on how atomic explosions would impact the typical American household. The town was made up of several houses, all containing mannequins, and even had the everyday buildings that we encounter today, such as gas stations and other stores. Behind each of these houses, a bunker was built, and since the houses were different distances from the blast, authorities could establish which bunkers were the most effective in case of a nuclear attack. But they weren't just placed inside the homes. Some mannequins were left outside to simulate a normal day with people out and about in the streets of the strange town. Some mannequins were dressed in wool clothing others in cotton and so forth, to determine the effects that a nuclear blast would have on different materials. 
Since the houses were placed at different distances from the blast, the military could determine the damage that each house would sustain during a blast. On one occasion, it was found that the town's electricity supply had been damaged, but certain services were still up and running, such as telephones. The mannequins, however, fared far worse as they were severely damaged by the explosions, painting a grim picture for the prospect of such a horrible event ever happening. As depressing and creepy as this may sound, the information that was gathered during the Annie tests may prove invaluable in the future, if only to help us decide on which bunker to hide in. Number 3 The Monte Cristo Homestead, which is situated in New South Wales, Australia, is known to be the country's most haunted house and many people have claimed to have strange, supernatural experiences in the building on occasion even managing to capture spirits on camera. The house is an old one, built in 1885 by Christopher William Crawley, an entrepreneur who passed away in 1910. His wife, Elizabeth, took his passing very hard, and she rarely left the house, only venturing out twice before she herself passed in 1933. The house stood empty until 1963, when a couple, Reg and Olive Ryan, decided to buy it, not knowing that the house had a reputation for being rather creepy. But they took the hauntings in stride and eventually decided to open the house to the public as a haunted attraction. It's during one of these tours that a photo was taken by a visitor that's left many people completely baffled. The guests decided to photograph one of the smaller bedrooms that contains only a single bed and two wooden cabinets. But when the photo was developed, they noticed something that surely shouldn't be there. In the doorway to the left, a translucent figure of a woman can be seen. She has long hair, pale skin, and is wearing a white dress and it almost seems as though she's looking directly into the camera. This is probably the best example of a ghost being captured on camera in the Monte Cristo homestead, but there are many more that also contain strange apparitions. Some people speculate that in another photo, a woman who worked for the Crawleys can be seen reflected in a mirror. Another, taken outside at horse-drawn carriages, shows a man believed to be Mr. Crawley sitting on one of the carriages as if he's getting ready to head out. Some guests have also reported hearing a woman crying, and it's believed to be Mrs. Crawley who's still mourning the loss of her husband. Other ghostly encounters inside the home include the sound of disembodied footsteps strange lights that suddenly disappear when they're investigated, and eerie noises that no one is able to explain. Number 2 Sprague Mansion, a reportedly haunted building located in Cranston, Rhode Island, was originally built as a farmhouse by William Sprague in 1790. But after he passed away, the house was left to his son, Amasa, who transformed it into the impressive 28-room mansion that it is today. Unfortunately, Amasa lost his life shortly after, and his brother William then took over and did his best to keep the family's printworks business alive, but he was unable to do so. The mansion was eventually sold to the Cranston Historical Society in 1967, but unbeknownst to them, the house is known to be haunted. Since around 1925, people have reported strange experiences and sightings in the house. For example, this photo taken by Cyril Palace, which shows a strange orb that was captured on camera in the house's wine cellar. The first recorded paranormal encounter happened on the house's main staircase, when witnesses saw an apparition of a man walking down the stairs, and many people believe that this is a massa that's still looking after the building. One of the first instances of a strange event in the house occurred in a room called the Doll's Room that has since been torn down. In here, the family kept a collection of dolls and marionettes, which have been seen with their eyes moving, despite the fact that they're painted on. Other visitors to the house have reported feeling someone brush against them when there's no one with them, and this is often accompanied by a rush of ice-cold air. There have also been reports of white figures that haunt the halls, and faces that are seen in the mirrors that hang on the walls. On another occasion, Two men decided to use a Ouija board to see if they could contact a spirit in the house, and they were shocked when the board spelled out the words, tell my story. Another regular sighting in the creepy mansion is of a woman who is seen in the highest domed section of the building. Passers-by have reported that she stares at them as they walk by, 
or that she walks back and forth as if she's impatiently waiting for someone. As if this isn't creepy enough, there have also been reports that guests had their bedding ripped off their beds while they slept, only to find that there's no one else in the room with them. Number 1 In 2002, a man named Samuel Sherman was browsing on eBay when he came across a stereoscopic image that someone had taken long ago at Mount Washington. He was instantly intrigued by it and decided to buy it, paying a total of $385. What had piqued his interest in the photo was an object that can be seen floating in the clouds above the mountain, and when he had the image cropped, he realized that it seemed to be cigar-shaped, and he realized that he may be in possession of a very old photo of a UFO. The photo was soon uploaded to the internet, where it was shared far and wide by UFO enthusiasts, who believed that this was an extraterrestrial craft that had been caught on camera. But one man decided to investigate further, and for the next six years, he tried to find as much information on the photo as possible. Then, in 2003, he stumbled upon an old Wires Time article that held a few more clues. The article stated that the photo was taken by two men named Howard Kimball and Amos Clough. Since the photo was taken in 1870 or 71, it was quickly named by ufologists as the oldest known photo of a UFO ever taken. He then learned that a high-resolution copy of the image was kept at the New York Public Library, and after inspecting it, he stated that the object was, in fact, not a UFO, but an object that had been placed on the mountain since it could be seen in front of the mountain in the original image rather than floating above it. But others weren't convinced as theories started cropping up. Some commenters stated that they believe it was a mothership of sorts, and that smaller extraterrestrial craft may have been stored inside, ready for deployment. There were also some people who claimed that they could see an emblem on the object that closely resembled the emblem worn by German soldiers during World War II. To further their theories, believers pointed out that since it's a stereoscopic image, it would be virtually impossible to fake, since those types of photos are known to be very hard to falsify. Sherman stated that he intended to have the photo analyzed by experts, after which he would have the results made public, but whether this was ever done is unknown. Whether this photo really does show an extraterrestrial craft hovering over Mount Washington or not, it's an image that has sparked a lot of debate and is sure to do so for decades to come. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the link below to download June's journey and help June solve the mysterious case of her sister.